Hi study partner, how was your day? So um, today we will be discussing about definitions of anesthesia but I will be dividing them into multiple small videos only to avoid confusion. So firstly, in this video we will be discussing only about three definitions. Blood gas partition coefficient, oil gas partition coefficient and minimum alveolar concentration. Firstly, blood, blood and gas partition coefficient. So this please go by the name of the uh, definition so blood and gas so concentration in blood divided by concentration in gas so this is blood gas partition coefficient so there's nothing to remember in this all you have to do is derive from the definition itself yes for those who want extra marks this is also called as Ostwald coefficient i hope that's clear in the video Ostwald coefficient okay so concentration of anesthetic gas in the blood divided by concentration of anesthetic gas itself so this we know what you should understand from this is so suppose this is a blood vessel right and this is the blood flowing through so concentration in blood itself so how much of it has dissolved and how much of it is present in the gas phase so this orange thing is your gas phase this brown is the blood phase so how much amount or how much is the amount of anesthetic okay rather inhalational anesthetic present in this part divided by how much of anesthetic is present in the gas phase so i hope this makes uh, points clear so why should you know this right jobless no this is very very important i'll tell you why suppose you take some anesthetic and majority of the uh, portion gets dissolved or gets resolved or gets resorbed in the blood phase and there's hardly anything remaining in the gas phase so what will happen you have to keep waiting 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 till the entire blood phase gets saturated so that after some time some of it might dissociate from the blood and enter the gas phase so i'll make a bigger diagram this is your blood phase and this is your gas phase right so if something dissolves more in the blood so you have to keep waiting 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 till it completely dissolves so that there is no more space remaining for it to dissolve in the blood phase so later after this it gets saturated the entire some of the uh, anesthetic gas will start forming in the gas phase okay vice versa if it is not very good at dissolving in blood so what happens it hardly dissolves in the it hardly dissolves in the blood and majority will remain in the gas phase so what is the advantage our uh, our intention is to have more amount of uh, gas in the gas phase so that when it reaches the brain it diffuses easily into the brain yeah it's okay my diagram sucks we have discussed that so our intention is to have more amount of gas in the sorry more amount of inhalational anesthetic in the gas phase so that it dis, uh, it, dis, it can dissociate when it reaches the brain but if it is sitting in the bl blood itself and it's saying mommy i don't want to come out then it takes so much time for anesthetic agent to reach the brain and get anesthetized so blood gas partition coefficient tells you the speed of induction right or the speed taken for an anesthetic gas to knock off a person so blood gas partition is talking about speed okay so by now you would have realized that higher the concentration in the gas phase the speed is higher so blood gas coefficient is inversely proportional to speed of induction is this clear okay if it's not clear please watch the video once again i'm sure it will help you so i'll give you two examples one is xenon the blood gas coefficient for xenon is 0.14 why is this only 0.14 no values or anything the numerator and the denominator is the same right numerator is also concentration denominator is also concentration so this is just a mere value so in when you get an mcq which says that blood gas coefficient is this much mg this much ml that itself rules out that it's a wrong answer okay so this clue also should help you so for blood gas coefficient for xenon is 0 
okay i'm i'm sorry to say this but this value is sometimes asked in questions desflurane it's 0.42 some half somewhere related to half okay somewhere related to half next is methoxyfluorine methoxyfluorine has blood gas coefficient of 15 so now you tell me which pause the video and you think which of these two is fast in inducing so methoxyfluorine is the slowest and desflurane is the fastest among the clinically available gases obviously xenon is your ideal yeah one more point about xenon xenon is the ideal so anything which is the best for everything blindly go for xenon but it, since it's not clinically available i want you to remember that desflurane is the fastest and methoxyfluorane is the slowest based on blood gas partition coefficient okay so now this part is clear so i'll go to the second part of the definition that is oil gas partition coefficient what is oil gas partition coefficient we don't know what it is so we'll derive by the name of the definition so oil oil mein how much gas mein how much that's it so partition is a line so concentration in oil so they have chosen olive oil as standard so concentration in olive oil divided by concentration in gas so olive oil is obviously an example of lipid so by getting to know the concentration in a lipid you are able to judge or you are able to decide its lipid solubility so if it is lipid soluble it attains more concentration in olive oil compared to that of its concentration in gas so how is this helpful clinically so clinically what happens this is your blood vessel and this is your brain okay so what happens here your blood vessel is getting the anesthetic gas i'll maintain the color code so now what happens this anesthetic uh, agent was not liking blood so it was staying away and it was staying in gas it was staying in gaseous form so now what happens this sees a lipid and it also it also sees lipid everywhere else in all possible membranes and all tissues so this highly lipid soluble uh anesthetic gas easily diffuses off along the lipid membranes so what does this conclude how is this helpful clinically if an anesthetic agent is more lipid soluble very less amount is enough to produce anesthesia if it is not lipid soluble so what you have to do you have to give more and more gas you have to give more and more gas so that it gets concentrated so much and it cannot wait any more right so the gradient becomes too much and later it starts diffusing inside okay so oil gas partition is therefore related to amount of drug required to produce anesthesia so what what does amount of drug mean amount of drug is nothing but potency yeah potency is the minimal amount of drug required to produce a certain effect and in this case it is anesthesia or knock out the person so blood gas partition coefficient helps in to determine the speed of induction and oil gas partition coefficient helps to determine the potency of the drug now this olive oil concept we apply it on human subjects and that the extended concept of this olive oil or oil gas partition coefficient is your mac that is minimum alveolar concentration so what is minimum alveolar concentration is how much with how much less amount of drug can you produce anesthesia so minimum concentration of the anesthetic agent required to knock off a person okay just remember like this it actually is required to produce no response to any noxious stimuli or any surgical incision in 50% of the subjects okay so it it uh, takes about like let's say if this much amount of drug was sufficient to produce anesthesia in 50% 
of the subjects so that is mac okay for those who want more co advanced concept i would like to tell you there is something called as mac 50 and mac 95 so mac 50 is amount of drug required to produce anesthesia in 50 percent of subjects and mac 95 it's very simple amount of drug required to produce anesthesia in 95 percent of the individuals obviously this has to be the same right like but sometimes not all of us react similarly so we go by the uh, uh, normal distribution curve so there are some of us who require more slightly more amount of drug so i, I want you to remember that mac 95 is usually 1.3 times mac 50 so this means that already 50 percent of people are responding well to the anesthetic drug for a small dose and the rem in remaining 50 percent who are not getting anesthetized with that very small dose of in that 45 percent or in so overall 95 percent of them generally okay this means that if the dose required to anesthetize 50% of the people was not sufficient, if you raise the dose by 1.3 times, that time 95% of the subjects will get anesthetized. So this is the concept. Okay, now what is this minimum alveolar concentration? So this is again very simple. So this is your blood vessel that is carrying your anesthetic gas and this is the brain. So basically you should measure that how much is this part that is required to produce anesthesia, right? So ideally you have to sample an artery near the brain, some middle meningeal artery or wherever and you have to collect this sample and check partial pressure of each gas. Do you think it's feasible? No. So what we did? If this is the alveoli, this is the blood vessel and this is the system, the gas is perfusing here and blood is flowing continuously and it is reaching the system. At initially what happens, some point of time it saturates in such a way that these pressures come into an equilibrium. So the point at which this pressure comes to equilibrium with this and this minimum concentration here required to produce the concentration here and this body tissue could be brain again this body tissue could be brain again so this minimum amount of concentration of anesthetic drug required to produce anesthesia in the brain is called as minimum alveolar concentration so this is again this is again related to potency because if the minimum alveolar concentration is very less let's say some drug okay i'll take the real examples again our favorite xenon value of xenon is 70 percent and value of methoxyfluorine is 0.16 percent and nitrous oxide is 104 percent yes nitrous oxide is above 100 so MAC of methoxyfluorine is 0.16% and MAC of nitrous oxide is 104%. So concentration of methoxyfluorine in the alveoli to produce anesthesia is only 0.16%. So it is highly potent means only 0.16% of methoxyfluorine is enough to knock out a person but concentration that is to be achieved by nitrous oxide to produce anesthesia is 104 percent which means amount of drug required is very high so it is very less potent therefore mac talks about potency and mac is nothing but it is based on your oil gas partition coefficient so as you know lesser the MAC, higher the potency. Therefore, MAC is inversely proportional 
to potency or rather potency is inversely proportional to mac so please remember that uh, in clinically available anesth inhalational anesthetics mac is highly potent and nitrous oxide is the least potent there will be one more uh, there will be part two of these uh, definitions in anesthesia as well so until then keep studying you are going to do it this time never lose hope stay confident so don't forget to like comment and subscribe so until next time this is your study partner signing off